What if we could insulate our homes with materials we can grow in the ground? It sounds cool, but what if those materials were illegal? I was laughed at. People said, you must be out of your mind. You're trying to build houses out of a Schedule One substance. This is never going to happen. Industrial hemp really refers to a rapidly renewable feedstock. It's kind of like the sober cousin of THC producing varieties of industrial hemp. Today, the definition for industrial hemp is that it has 0.3% THC or less. Hemp has been used around the world for centuries, from clothing to animal feed to fuel. But from 1937 to 2018, it was listed as a controlled substance and not an agricultural commodity. That's all changing now. Buildings are responsible for about 40% of our energy consumption and about 40% of our carbon footprint. Natural building materials present a solution that would not only reduce carbon emissions, but also sequester carbon during their production cycle. So in using industrial hemp as a raw material in our building materials, we can lower that carbon footprint because carbon dioxide is actually stored in the plant stock itself. This all begs the question, what will it take to once again make sustainable building materials the norm? This is Make It Count, a series on environmental innovations and the math it takes to bring them to the masses. The story of hemp architecture really begins when I was an undergraduate student studying architecture. This is Maddie Mead, CEO and founder of Hempitecture, a company looking to bring industrial hemp back into mainstream construction in the U.S. I actually looked at what we did in antiquity and before the Industrial Revolution and I tried to understand what did people of the past build their houses with. I had this light bulb aha moment when I learned we had a rich agricultural history and heritage uh, of industrial hemp cultivation in the United States. The explorers found the new world with industrial hemp sales. In World War I, most rope was made with industrial hemp. The founding fathers of the United States grew industrial hemp. We went from this point of let's build with the earth to let's make petrochemical or synthetic materials. And I think we're actually coming back full circle to our ancient roots of building with the earth. If you make your way down the insulation aisle in Home Depot, you're gonna see fiberglass. You're gonna see rock wool, dense pack cellulose. These are really the incumbent insulation products in which Hempitecture is designing solutions for and really against. While insulation products like fiberglass are notably cheap, they do have a heavy carbon footprint and release significant amounts of toxic air pollutants during their manufacturing process. Hemp wool is a non-woven insulation product and it's made with some pretty simple ingredients. We use processed industrial hemp fiber, a binder, and a fire retardant. What we found is that hemp wool is just better for everybody that comes in contact with it. Whether it's the general contractor, the laborers, or the installation technicians that are installing it, to the homeowner, everybody is happier when they're around hemp wool because they're not itchy, they're not worried about toxic off-gassing or abrasiveness on their skin. It's just a better product that people enjoy working with. As a natural material, hemp insulation has a few advantages over synthetic alternatives. For example, it's safe to touch, requiring no specialist clothing to handle it. Hemp wool is resistant to fungus growth. It is antimicrobial. It's not a conducive surface for the cultivation of mold and mildew. Even bugs or pests or rodents, there's no toxicity. There's no nasty chemicals in the material itself. Now that more states are legalizing the use and cultivation of the plants that produce hemp, it's not surprising to see that industrial hemp is becoming easier to grow as well. That will probably make it easier for these sorts of products to scale and compete with incumbent products. Right now, we're actually importing hemp wool. So we are building in the unit cost of, you know, shipping a container, $4,500 from point of manufacture to our warehouse is built into the cost per square foot. Right now, Hempitecture is on track to compete with companies like Rockwool, a major U.S. manufacturer of mineral wool insulation. Their comparable R-value product is about 90 cents per square foot, whereas ours is $1.35 per square foot. With U.S. manufacturing, we want to be actually price comparable to Rockwool. 
Fiberglass is notoriously cheap. And while we do want to be somewhat price comparable to fiberglass, we recognize that fiberglass is going to have a hard time checking off the health and the environmental benefit boxes that hemp wool can check off. But for hemp wool to become price competitive with rock wool and eventually fiberglass insulation, they'll need to scale and find other ways to bring down costs. The more industrial hemp fiber that we're buying, the lower cost per pound we can get. The lower cost per pound we get, the lower cost our insulation can be. And so we can strive for price parity with volume and scale. And that really begins with manufacturing it here in the U.S. About a year's time from now, we will be manufacturing hemp wool here in the United States. Solving some of the biggest problems that we're facing in our world today is not easy. We feel so fortunate to be bringing more sustainable materials into an industry that in a lot of ways lacks sustainability, lacks choices that are better for both people and planet. This is really the culmination of my life's work and my co-founder and everyone on the Hempitecture team. I want to be on the forefront of this industry. It really is an exciting time for us to address this problem of sustainability and lack of healthy alternatives in the built environment.